What you making? Oh, uh, well, found this old ball peen hammerhead. It's a little one, and I don't have a small one. So what I did was I went out in the shop and took a piece of oak, one by four that I had, and I drawed out the handle that I wanted, and I took the band saw and cut it out as close as I could. Then I took my pocket knife and I whittled this top down here and took the band saw and cut me a groove in it to where it'll actually slip up on the hammer here. I'll be able to drive that on good and tight and put me a wedge in the end of it. But I want the handles. I like making my handles because my hands are big and I like to make a handle that will fit my hand. So. I've been sitting here with a wood rasp, cutting this thing down. How will you know when you get it there? I mean... Uh, it's, it's basically by feel, just how I, how it feels on my hand. Uh, I, uh, I'll stop, because I'm right-handed, I'll see how it feels in my hand. Sort of like the Indians did with the rocks. Kind of, I guess you might say that. Just you know, every a feel for your own hand. Yeah, everything's got to fit me. I, that's the reason I don't go to town and buy my handles a lot of times. Because I I want a handle that fits me. I don't want a generic handle. How are you going to make that really smooth when you get through? Well, I'll sand it. Um, this wood rasp has got several different cuttings on it. and you said that. This side is a, the wood rasp is flat. This side is curved. This is a finer cut. This is a really, really coarse, aggressive cut. Now, I started off with the real coarse, aggressive one because when you're pushing it, it really pulls out some wood. You see these little shavings all over my pants here. It really, to get it down to the basic shape, that's the fastest way to go. But once you get it to that shape, I mean, it's extremely rough. I don't know if you can see the fibers on that wood, how it pulls the fibers up there. Once you get to that point, then you'll take this side, which is smoother, and you'll go back in here and you'll kind of start brushing it up with that. And when you get to that point and you get it in the hammer, what are you doing to the top? The top's got a split in it where I sawed it with a bandsaw, and I'll be driving a wedge in that to expand it on top of the head of the hammer where it won't come out. And then what do you do to finish it as far as well before I actually put it in the hammer I will uh, I'll oil it because okay. I, I like to put oil all over the heads of mine what kind of oil uh, I use organic flaxseed oil which is they tell me it's the same thing as linseed oil so I I don't really know that for sure but that's what I've been told and who's gonna wash them clothes when you come out of them well I guess that'll just be up to the woman of the house. I don't know. <laughs> They're getting kind of dirty, aren't they? Yeah. That was a clean pair I put on this morning, so I guess it is what it is. You'll be swinging on the line. That's pretty cool, though. Well, we've got the hammer handle finished now. We've got the flaxseed oil on it. and This is basically what it looks like now. Cleaned it up a little bit, oiled it down, where to be water repellent. Cut us a wedge and drove in the top of it. So it's should be good to go. Another project made on the homestead. We didn't have to go buy a handle. It, it's a little bit larger than the handle ought to be for a hammer that size, but it fits my hand good because my hands are big and I like a I like a handle that fits really nice in my hand. It just goes to show on a homestead, you can take old tools and refurbish them and make them where you can use them.